Hello and welcome to this video for the eldest, eldest 505 Avant five berth caravan made in 2004. Um, it's a very level caravan. It does have the odd ding here and there which I'm going to show you as I go through this video. Um, the reason for making this video is that by the time we've finished you'll know everything about this caravan. You'll see everything working inside as it should. I can show you all the accessories and, and one thing and another as we go around the caravan and there's also one or two other little bits and pieces that are coming with it so it has the Winterhof anti-sway hitch lock this makes the caravan very very steady um, when you're towing it the front end is in very good condition the front end could do with a bit of a polish but couldn't they all under the front locker now normally in this front locker you'd keep the um, things like the gas bottle um, towing mirrors, leg winder for the caravan uh, ramps and one thing and another all stored away in here comes with a gas bottle that also has a, a level indicator on it and that's saying to me this, gattel, this bottle is probably just over half empty There'll be some caravan levelling ramps coming with it. These here. There's a scissor jack with handle, a couple of door extending mirrors, um, a bit of blue flush for the cassette toilet and pink flush for the toilet flush, which I'll show you in a bit. We've got the, the leg winding handle for the leg corner steadies for winding them up and down. This is an old um, cover for the towing frame it's not in very good condition but it does the job and down here is a bit of a um, this is this is for in the porch awning it's a, it's a, a ground cover and I'll show you the porch awning after um, coming with this van this van's also got a motor mover fitted which, which works and I'll, I'll operate that and show you that it's working and everything there's a porch awning I'll put that up and show you that um, and there's also a, a caravan cover which I'll put on and I'll show you that as well down this side uh, there's one or two little dings um, there's a couple here a couple of little dings there um, this is the motor mover I was talking about I'll show you to operate that it's also got um, a wheel clamp and this caravan is not on steel wheels it's on alloy wheels um, in very good condition and the tyres are good let's have a look underneath while you're there so you have the freshwater aqua roll barrel <coughs> and this is the handle for it uh, so you can clip it onto the con onto the container at the top and the bottom it turns over and then you can pull it and it rolls This is the whale pump for feeding water into the caravan. It just slots into there This cover here. This is for the um, gas water heater the gas storage water water hot water heater Now this cover when you're turning the, the hot water on and you want to heat it up on gas inside you must remove this cover or um it won't ignite and you just pull it from the bottom lift it up and it's off and that's the vent for the uh, gas water heater the gas water heater also shows works on electric and I'll show you that after you've got the, the waste hog grey waste water container um, with its pipes its waste pipes that's, that's the cap for on here this will also be stored under the front hatch, the waste pipe. And behind this cover, you have the the cassette for the toilet. And this cassette, what this does, you just press this little yellow lever down and pull this out. And this cassette comes all the way out for emptying. Um, so you take it to an appropriate drain, turn the nozzle like this, screw the cap off, Pour it down your waist, put a bit of water in it, cap back on, give it a shake, 
back down your drain and then you put a couple of litres of fresh water in here and uh, uh, some of the blue fluid which was in the container at the front that I showed you and then that sorted your cassette out on the top one this pulls out like this screw the cap off and this is for the toilet flush and what you do here you pour some pink fluid into the top there and then fill it up with water and this holds about 15 litres and I've just filled it um, so that should last you a good bit of time but there is a, a level indicator here so as this tank begins to empty the level will go down then you know that you're ready to refill this um, all these locks work there's two sets of keys with the caravan all the locks on the caravan work and there's a little bit of a mark here on this side Take a look around the back. The back's all good, there's no marks on the back. All the corners are good, the light lenses are good and all the rear lights work. Now down this side, um, this side is very very level but there is the odd ding, um, but nothing drastic. There's a little, there's a bit of a mark up here and this is where caravan awning poles have, have been fitted and it, you always get it on a caravan. Uh, there's a little bit of a ding there, but it's quite level down this side as well. Caravan step. This tyre is good. Have a look under there while we're here. Uh, alloy wheel, like the same as the other side. Good condition. There's a, a little bit of a mark here find my hand, a little bit of a, bit of a mark there, there's a little one here, there, there's one on the door, there, and there's a bit up here. Behind this cover, um, as I was saying, two sets of keys, two sets of keys, Behind yeah, this cover is a ledger battery. This ledger battery is approximately two and a half to three years old, um, but it's still in good condition. And this is where the hookup lead hooks in. And behind this hookup lead, um, I'll just take this off. <coughs> behind this hookup lead, that's the switch um, to send the power to the control panel for the motor mover. And all you do with this, you just turn it to the right and that's turned the power onto the motor mover unit and when you finish using the motor mover turn it back off I don't know if this is where I wish I had another pair of amps uh, this hookup lead is approximately um, 45 feet long I've got this plugged in plugged into my shed in the yard Put that back up and I don't forget. So that's a caravan and to, this is a 2004 caravan. Now in the caravan there's a folder full of um, instruction manuals for all the units inside, the fridge, the cooker, um, the hot water system etc etc. There's also an instruction manual um, for the motor mover. There's the original handbook and um, I'll show you all this when I do it at the inside of the caravan and there's also um, the uh, 
certificate saying that it was made in 2004. But the way to check a caravan's age, if you're not sure, on the windows of all the caravans is the CRIS number. And that's a central registration information system. And this is it. Now these numbers are on all the windows and this number is also the chassis number for this caravan. And to find out the year of a caravan, you count 10 digits in and the 10th digit donates what year that caravan is. So if you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you come to a 4. And that 4 says this caravan was made in 2004. So that's the outside of the caravan. Um, weights and measures, I'll explain that to you shortly. There's the weigh plate. So it weighs 1,190 kilograms unladen and it can gross out at 1,325 kilograms. But I'm going to talk to you about weights and measures next um, because it's important that you can tow this caravan legally and I'll explain all that to you uh, next. So that's the outside of the caravan and all the accessories. Remember all the accessories are here, there's nothing more to buy. You can just literally hook up and go. So we'll do weights and measures now. Weights and dimensions. Now this caravan is um, from the very back to the very front of the towing eye. It's uh, 21 feet and 5 inch. The internal length, so that's inside from the back window to the front, the inside of the front window, is 18 feet 6. And it's 7 foot 2 wide. And from the floor to the very tip of the aerial it's about nine feet. Uh, now unladen it weighs a thousand and ninety kilograms and it can gross out to 1325 laden. Um, and a bit of important information for you, your towing vehicle, so you can tow this caravan legally, your towing vehicle would have to have no less a minimum of 1,395 kilograms to achieve a 95% match. Um, so this is the curb weight of your car. And to find out the curb weight of your car, you can look in uh, of your towing vehicle. You can look in your logbook or Google it online, and it'll give you the relevant information. So as I was saying, the caravan's got a motor mover fitted. And uh, this is the remote for it, the, uh, sorry, the control for it. Um, it works uh, by wire. And this, this wire is quite a length, with plenty of wire to go at. And it plugs into the control box for the motor mover um, inside, underneath the front settee. So it's kind of like in this area. Um, I'll just show you that this is working and run you through it. But first of all, what I'll show you is the motor mover itself. I've engaged this motor mover already, so it's um, already engaged against the wheels at both sides. And to engage the motor mover, I've, I've already engaged this motor mover simply because I can't work with one hand and use this bar properly. So it fits on the end of there, and you turn it 180 degrees through itself and it puts the motor mover up against the wheel and then to disengage it, you just put it on from this end, turn it 180 degrees and it disengages. And you can operate it from this side or the other side. Um, and a word of warning, when you've used the motor mover, remember to disengage it because the motors will still be against the tyre if you're towing the caravan. It'll destroy the motors and shred your tyre. So back to the remote, they're very easy to use. So this is the uh, control for the motor mover, it's on a wire and the controls behind that panel there um, under the front settee. So you press that button to make it come towards you, like this.
you can slew it round with these controls like this. So the thing to do with this motor mover is just have a play with it, um, get used to how it works. And have fun, that's a motor mover. This is a caravan with a, with a cover on. It's a breathable, a breathable cover. And I advise that on top of the aerial, the peak on the top, it actually screws off. So if you screw it off and put it safe somewhere, it won't end up going through your caravan cover and ripping it. It's all good on the roof and the sides and the back and the front, um, but where these straps have been fastened over time, it has gone a little bit ragged um, at the bottom, along the bottom edge. But it serves its purpose and uh, it covers the caravan up and protects it against uh, winter weather or even from the sun, from the UV, etc. <clears throat> Good across the back. And it has a zip on this side and a zip at the front. And what you do, you get your step ladders either side, one there, one there and you gently pull the cover over the top of the caravan to get it rest, to get it resting so it doesn't fall off. Move your step ladders down and pull it forward uh, down to the front of the caravan and then um, do, do your zips up. Make sure like me you, you, manage, you, you remember to shut the caravan door first, which I didn't. Uh, little bits of ragged edges like we're saying, but it's quite adequate. It does its job and it's breathable so your caravan won't go damp. Uh, inside and that's the caravan cover this is a porch awning it's um, six foot wide it's nine foot across the front and it's six foot from the floor to the top there rising to about seven and a half feet eight feet in the back uh, it's in good condition uh, there's no rips or tears in it the zips are all good um, Coniston looks made by N and R awnings, and this uh, front door zips all the way off, um, and the side doors zip up this way, as does the one in the end there. And what I'll do, um, I'll just show you inside, and then I'll take this front door off and open them side doors and uh, it turns into a gazebo. It's not pegged down so this is going to be fun with one hand. There we go. So inside it's just um, a pull and there it is with the front door zipped out and the two end doors open so that it's, that's it now as a gazebo um, now we'll take a look inside and show you what it's all about so you're coming into the caravan and this door it's the stable door and what that means is you can have the uh, top open, the, the top open and the bottom closed uh, like this. So you can shut the bottom bit and you can have the top bit open. And also above the door is the outside light, which is great for in the awning. There's a, a handy basin on the top of this on, on this on this door. Uh, it's not a basin, a bucket, a waste bucket waste bin, just clicks off, slots back on a bit awkward using one hand but there we go and as you come into the caravan 
um, to the rear we've got this seating area with a table, cupboards above, uh, a shelf there, all these cupboards are dry. Um, and there's fly nets to all the windows, the fly nets are down at the moment and they all work and all the window stairs in the caravan um, when I say window stairs, I mean these see them they are all good uh, and blackout blind every window has got a blackout blind on it and they all work And this rear area, um, this table comes out and you fold the leg back under itself, or oh, spare wheel there look, um, and this bed, this, this settee and this settee make up um, a double bed across here and then this section here lifts out and makes a bunk on top and it's also got the mattresses for it and the ladder and I'll set them up after so I can show you exactly what they like. Also on this door on the main door in, there's a full length fly net, so you can pull the fly net across, uh, keep out flies, that's great with um, the bottom door closed and the top, what, top door open, it lets in air, keeps out flies when it's, when it's warm. This is the, the switch for the outside light, and then just to your left as you come in the door, this is the 12 volt switch, that's in the off position. Click it down and it puts a 12 volt system on in the caravan. Um, didn't show you this light. There's a light here. All the lights in the van can be switched on and off independently. And this skylight has a blackout blind also, like that. And you just click the fly net down if you want to push the skylights open. That brings us to the sink. Sink with a glass lid top, very nice modern sink. Lift the lid up, swivel the tap to you. Across like this is for hot water. Down, push it back slightly like that, and that's cold water. And this hot water gets very hot in this caravan, and there's two ways to get the hot water. You can have the hot water on the gas, or you can have it on the electricity the 240 volt hookup. Below the sink is the fridge and I've got this fridge um, switched on on the gas at the minute to show you that it works. Click the switch, open the door. Then in the back here, um, might be awkward to see, I've actually got the pilot light lit for the gas. Uh, Yeah, it's a bit awkward. It is lit on the gas. Um, I'll just take this, truck, this shelf out. It, it's hard to pick up on this camera, but it, it is lit, the pilot light's on. This is the, the blue flame there. So that's working on the gas, um, but it also works perfectly well on the 240 volt hookup. This side is the gas control. So you turn, I'm going to turn this off, that is now off, so you push that switch in, turn it to that position there where, the, where that little flame is, and you press the igniter, click the igniter and a little spark on the gas, it can be a bit temperamental to light, um, and then the control to this side, this is the 240 volt hookup switch, so you click that on the on position, it lights up, and then that's the fridge working on the 240 volt hookup. It's a good fridge, um, it gets fairly 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 cold in here, it's very very cold now at the moment, this is a little freezer compartment um, and then these are your fins for the back of the fridge. So it works on the gas and it works on the 240 volt, uh, never had it working on the 12 volt, you'd have that switched on when, you've, when you're towing it and you've got the, the grey socket 
um, plug into the back of your car. Next door to the fridge, above the fridge is a sink which we've done and then you come to the cooker on your right. This is this has a window, fly net, blackout blind. Um, and same again, a glass lid, just lift the lid up and it's an automatic lighter. So this is where I'm going to struggle now because I've only got one pair of hands. Um, turn, the, turn the switch on, press this igniter. That's lit that gas ring. I'll put them all on then you can see them. that one lit. Is that one lit? That's that one lit. So all four rings are working and the gas. And you've got the grill below. Back on the fire, and it's red up. Same again. Uh, turn to turn the gas on. Press the igniter. And that's the grill lit. And the grill also has a grill pan like that. For the grill, you've got the oven. Same again with the oven, turn the switch on, press the igniter, and there's the oven lit. So electric igniter, oven works, grill works, the four rings above work, and then down here you've got just like a little storage area. And there's all the gas taps for the appliances on this side. They're there in the on position, obviously. And then behind me, I'm going to show you this next because this fire is burning me back. Behind me, now opposite the cooker, is the gas fire. This is switched on. Um, I'll see if I can pick up the pilot light for you. In here. There it is. That's, that's the fire lit on the gas and these is turn the gas on with this and click 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 with the igniter and on this side this is uh, works in conjunction with the 240 volt Truma Ultra Heat and this works off of the electric and this is a uh, temperature control with a little switch now I'll operate this after because I'm going to show you up there where the controls are for it I'm going to turn this fire off Um, so above the fire, there's a wardrobe. You've a, a coarse hanger rail above. There's a power pack for the um, uh, TV aerial on the roof. In here is these are the mattresses for that bunk I'm going to put up for you, and the ladder to get up there. light switch works independently of course as they all do and then so next to the fire and opposite the fridge and the sink is the bathroom We've got a big mirror here hello uh, so in here is a bathroom you come in here and you have um, uh, your skylight above also the blackout blind and flight net same again, you just click that down to open that vent up. Mirror there, mirrors above, and a little uh, cabinet with two glass doors. Sink below. And these taps, this is also the tap for the shower. Um, this is the hot tap. Cold tap. And to turn this into the shower, because this is your shower base under here, I'll lift that mat in a second. 
um, I'm just telling anybody to about some. Um, so you you get all of this, pull it out, it comes up here and clicks into that fitting like that. Then that's your shower head. Above here you have a little storage box like this. little vanity unit at the back with some shelves to the left and the right and a mirror towel holder toilet roll holder and then this is the toilet that for cassette toilet and um, this control here opens a little gate down here so you turn it and it opens and shuts this gate like that so you have it open when you're using the toilet and to flush the toilet you just pump this like this and it squirts clean fluid around. And we spoke about the pink fluid outside. Close it back up when you've done, and then I recommend that you just give it a little bit of a squirt. And what that does, it just rests on the top of that little gate and keeps the seal nice and soft. Also, this little gauge down here. I showed you the, the cassette the, the cassette for the toilet outside. When it's when that cassette's getting full, there's a little rotor arm in here, and at the minute it's green, and what it does as it fills up, this will move to the right, and it'll turn red. And when it's turning red, you know it's time to empty your cassette. And I'll move this mat. And this is the shower base. And that there is a heating vent for the blown air, the blown hot air system, which I'll show you shortly. Light, light with a switch. So then you come into the front of the van. I'll show you in these cupboards, and you know that they're dry. There's loads and loads of cupboard space. And there's always there's also under these settees in the front and in the rear there's storage space. Plus you've got the wardrobe. And you have a shelf across here above the front window. And also behind here there's a carbon monoxide tester. Um, a smoke alarm, They'll, this will require batteries and this will be the replacing shortly. Uh, what's the date on it? November 2019, so there's about a year's life left in this, then it must be changed. More cupboard space. This here is the box for the front of the radio, so that this front comes off. This radio works, it has a speaker there, and a speaker over here. And I don't want to infringe any copyrights, so what we'll do, we'll turn it on. Uh, search. You get the drift, it works. Um, these spotlights here work on the 240 volt and you can swivel them and you can also move them in and out. And below here is the 12 volt spotlight. Same at this side, this is the 12 volt spotlight and the 240 volt spot spotlight and this one also swivels and in and out. Um, so in the front here, this area makes up into a double bed. Now you can either, remember you can sleep three in the back, two on there and one on the bunk which I'll set up after. And you could either sleep one person here on that settee, one person there <coughs> on that settee, 
or the whole thing makes up into um, a large double bed and you can have this set out in a few ways um, this if you pull under here this comes out and it forms the base of the bed now that cupboard is also removable and down this side and down that side they each have two screws in it which which screws it down to the pedestal that it stood on but I've taken them screws out because that is also a lift out cupboard so what I'm saying is you can either have this section as your double bed or you can lift that cupboard out put it in the back of the van and then it makes a huge double bed and what I'll do I'll set it up as a huge double bed shortly and I can show you what I mean and below here is uh, another cupboard would you believe oh I didn't know that were in there never mind that spare coax uh, aerial to the left we've got a plug socket that's a 240 volt plug socket that works to the right is an extra um, coaxial TV aerial slot and a 12 volt plug socket for your TV so you can have the TV plugged in here above these drawers because this table the, oh that's the remote for the motor mover because this table on top has a little bolt here click that down click that down then this this slides out like this and the top of it tilts back struggling with one hand so the top of it tilts back like that and, and it gives you a table in in the front here there is also another table in this van apart from the one that's in the back uh, just to the right of the fire in this section here there's um, a clothes rack which you can hang on the caravan windows outside and then also at the back of that there's another table these are the legs these legs just fold out and then this table can stand independently either in the van or outside or in the awning just wherever you want to put it it's right back in here and then I don't fall over it being a dozy bugger I might do uh, right so back to the front um, we'll fold this table back up and get it out of my way Got room to talk and think and do. Put that back. Uh, now, this brings to this to this control panel. Now, there's two ways you can heat this caravan up, get get heat into the caravan. One was by using the gas fire, but you can also use this Truma Ultra Heat, and what this does this turns on uh, a fan on the back of the fire and elements to to blow hot air around the van from various points and to turn this on just for example you wanted it on 2000 watt it's got a thousand watt 500 watt 2000 watt click it up like this you'll hear the fan start to turn on and then down here um, if you were to click the switch to the left hand position it turns the fan on full time to blow air around the van or if you click it to the right it'll do it automatically so what it's doing with that on automatic it's picking up the temperature of the van and when it thinks it, the temperature's dropping it'll kick back in and uh, blow air back around the van again nice system not overly hot but they work they're good uh, so that's the I'm losing myself now that's the heat for the fire this side next to it this is the control to heat the water on gas that's the flame position so you click it round a green light comes on you'll hear it click in and what that is doing now that's heating the hot water on the gas you remember the vent that I showed you outside over that cover 
if you forget to take that that cover off that vent and you switch it on it'll initially go to green and fire up then it'll click off and it'll show a red light to the left of this green one that means that it hasn't fired up on gas check your vent come back and reoperate it hot water on gas and below that this switch here switch it on like that and this will give you the hot water on the 240 volt hookup um, and I forgot to show you this other switch actually uh, so that's the hot water on 240 hot water on gas turn that back off click that on um, turn this to the desired temperature the green light comes on so you know that that's working and then like I said operate this control here that back off and then to the left of these controls you've got a 240 volt plug socket that works this is your battery charge light shows that it's charging below this is uh, next to this is the switch for the pump so when the pump is so when the switch is in the up position the pump is turned off when it's on the down position it's turned on and this switch also provides the power for the status aerial in that wardrobe that, that I just showed you um, so it does two things it powers the pump and powers the TV aerial um, and below here your 12 volt plug socket for your TV with the coaxial aerial connector and this here is a shelf for your TV so this shelf will come up like this slot into place TV shelf so you can either have your TV here connected into this system or you could have it on top of the cupboards connected into that system there and that is another blown blown air vent for hot air and to this side here there's also another little uh, shelf this falls down it has a couple of legs under here that you just click out like this and that will sit on there giving you a bit of extra shelf space uh, work surface space to the side of your cooker and also here there's a little pull out shelf giving you a bit more space like that now what I'll do um, I'll set up these beds and I'll show you with that cupboard out fold everything up it's dry in here it, water doesn't rain in and the floor is very solid right so I'll do the front bed and then I'll do the rear bed that's the double bed set up in the front it makes a nice sized bed usually sleep across that way but it's entirely itself you could sleep across this way no problem and what I did forget to show you um, is this skylight above this is a hakey skylight quite a very big skylight uh, and it has this also has a blackout blind on it and a fly net um, and if you want to separate the pair get to the skylight you just open that little catch and this little catch pull the handle down and shove the window up Oops. and it's on arms so it'll stay up great great window that Turn it down slightly and put the bar on there and you're still getting air in. Now I'm going to do these rear beds. Well, these are the bunks made up. So the seating area of the table were is now turned into a double bed. And this is the third bed of the bunk above. So 
so there you have it. There's not a lot more. I don't think I can. Oh yes, uh, there is. I forgot to show you these. This folder here. It has all the manuals in for the appliances. So you've got like, for example, uh, the fridge, Thetford cassette toilet, Truma Ultra Heat, and these all tell you how to operate these systems. Um, original owner's handbook and various other bits and pieces. And also here, this is a nat the National Caravan Council certificate and this shows that this caravan was made in uh, 2004. Down on here, if you can read this. Um, yeah, 2004, 505. Um, and it also gives you some uh, internal lens and external lens and with some one thing and payloads. Uh, but I've already run run through that with you, but it's all there. Um, I can deliver this caravan for you if you like um, at one pound a mile postcode to postcode um, and I'll deliver it anywhere in the UK I'm not bothered if you want to send me abroad with it that's great just pay ferry fees <laughs> and my mileage uh, on this cupboard that we took out from from the front there I've just popped it down here plenty of room to get past so that's that's it uh, Thank you for watching this video. I know it might have gone on a little bit, but I needed to show you everything about this caravan so you know exactly what the situation is with it. Okay, bye for now. So that's a caravan. Um, you've seen everything working. Uh, I've showed you the motor mover, that that works. Um, I've put the porch awning up, you've seen that. You've seen the uh, caravan cover um, remember it's got all the accessories with it it's got its fresh water barrel wastewater barrel with pipes uh, the whale pump caravan step um, spare wheel uh, scissor jack everything uh, caravan step yeah I said that everything that you, that you need um, there's nothing more to buy because it's all there uh, there's I think there's even a bit of uh, chemical fluid the blue fluid for the um, toilet cassette that I showed you and a bit of the pink flush fluid um, I could also deliver this caravan for you uh, and I'll deliver it at one pound a mile postcode to postcode one way and I'll deliver that anywhere in the UK um, so that's it